Welcome to The Abundance Journey, the show that helps spiritual entrepreneurs create an abundance mindset that accelerates revenue. Secretly, everything you experience in your life is actually abundance. Once you understand how to activate abundance, you find yourself in flow with your business and clients, so it's easy to create the revenue you want. The Abundance Journey is the only show that activates abundance for you, so you enjoy rapid results in your business. Here's your host, the Abundance Ambassador, Elaine Starling. Welcome. I am so glad you're here with me, but I've got an important question to ask you. Are you stuck in nice girl syndrome? You know that situation where you're taking care of everybody else, all your friends, your family, you're constantly doing things for other people, your clients can call you anytime, day or night, and you're just there for them. And you're always willing to help them with their problems. And you forget to help you. Yeah, well, that's why I'm so excited that we get to chat with Tana Marshall. She is this amazing author, intuitive, and women's empowerment coach. She specializes in helping busy women who are 50 and over prioritize themselves and reclaim their power. With her signature program, Overcoming Nice Girl Syndrome, Tana guides women in setting healthy boundaries, practicing forgiveness, and embracing self-care for more joy and fulfillment. She was blessed to spend over 20 years at Capitol Records. She has these amazing stories about all the incredible people she got to work with and meet. And she seamlessly blends her spiritual wisdom with corporate experience to assist women in navigating both realms. She was laid off in 2008 and became a certified law of attraction coach, a certified holistic health practitioner, an experienced EFT practitioner, and the founder of Infinite Women an empowering community for like-hearted women. Tana, I am so thrilled that you're here with us today. Thanks for coming. I am so excited. It's taken us long enough. Thank you for having me. I know, I know. I've been talking about this with you for months and months, probably a couple of years now, because I really wanted you to get on the show. And I want you to tell us a little bit about why you're so passionate about what you do. Why is it so important for women to overcome nice girl syndrome? Well, I found myself in that situation after a lot of experiences, primarily caring for my mom full time for eight years by myself. And after she passed, I went into therapy and realized I had a lot of unresolved emotions and a lot of anger and resentment. And I needed to set boundaries with people in my life, which I thought were going to be temporary. I just said, look, I need to work on this stuff uninterrupted. But the longer I was away from those people, the happier I was, and the more I felt like myself, and the more I realized I had had been compromising myself and appeasing them and kind of getting screwed over here and there and disrespected constantly. And it gave me so much clarity. And so that became a focal point of my life. And a couple of years later, after doing a lot of this work, and the forgiveness was crucial because you don't want to stay in that place of anger and resentment. So I was doing a lot of forgiveness work as well. And then the idea came to me, like overcoming nice girls. And I'm like, I'm a nice girl. I've always been a nice girl. I've been nice to everybody. I like being nice to people. And this is not saying don't be nice. This is just saying you can be nice and not be a doormat as well, which is what I was learning to navigate during that time. So I created this program, Overcoming Nice Girl Syndrome, It's my signature program. I'm so happy with it. I'm so proud of it. And it's helped women overcome their nice girl programming because, and it's especially for women. I work primarily with women 50 and over. I'm open to anybody that needs me. But what I found is women who are Gen X like me or baby boomers, we were raised with that programming. You take care of everybody else, especially the men in your life and your kids. And if you think of yourself first, you're selfish. And that's Uh just a, it's a horrible word to women. Oh my God, don't call me selfish, but it's actually a good thing. And I love that Abraham talks about that Abraham Hicks, where they describe selfishness as the other people going, you shouldn't take care of you. You should do what I want you to do. You're being selfish. So when you think of it that way, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So it's not a bad thing. So I need you to help me kind of bridge the gap a little bit, because obviously we're talking about abundance, the abundance journey, and you're talking about nurturing yourself truly. 
So given the work that you do, no two people define abundance the same way. How would you define abundance given that you're really trying to help people love themselves and take care of themselves? Well, the whole premise behind setting boundaries is then that you have the time and the energy and the capacity to focus on yourself, which includes allowing abundance in. Because when you're focused on everybody else, then there's this feeling of lack and depletion. Like, oh my God, I'm so tired. And I think this is why a lot of women are getting sick and developing illnesses and all that kind of thing, because that's the only time they allow themselves to receive any kind of care or nurturing. So it allows them to create abundance, beginning with an abundance of love for themselves. And then it expands out to other areas of their life, emotional, financial, social, so it's, I think it's a huge foundation to abundance in every area of their lives. So we were talking about taking care of everybody else and never taking care of yourself. What are, what's another symptom that your clients typically experience before they start working with you? And, and that this is kind of like the bell going off. That's like, oh, I need to call Tana because I'm stuck with this. And, and so what, what are you noticing that is that? final straw that gets people to start working with you? It's different for everybody. Sometimes it's just years of that kind of treatment. Like, like I was dealing with where you finally realize, wait a minute, this is, I'm not going to swear, not good. (laughs) And I I need to make a change that this doesn't work for me anymore. Or there's a health issue. And I I know we have talked in our groups privately about that I healed myself of lupus. I was diagnosed when I was 15. I had an abusive family member growing up my whole life that I I had to really kind of make myself small to not upset them and stifle my own voice, never disagree with them, that kind of thing. And I fortunately, that's why I got into holistic health later. But when I learned about Louise Hay and read her story and read all of her descriptions about the the potential mental thought processes behind physical issues, the one for lupus was uh, giving up, better to die than stand up for oneself. And I was like, oh, my God. So it still took me a while to release that myself, but it did eventually heal myself of it. But I think this is why a lot of women have breast cancer, too, because Breasts represent nurturing Mm -hmm. and they are not getting nurtured and they are not nurturing themselves. So whatever it takes to bring them to that point where it's like, because I think when they hear the name of the program, Overcoming Nice Girl Syndrome, women are like, oh my God, I need that. So I I think that is like, oh yeah, I'm a nice girl and it's a syndrome and I want to overcome it. And it doesn't mean you're not nice anymore. It just means that you learn to set those boundaries and establish that power and that confidence from within, regardless of what anybody else thinks. Well, Tana, I know we've had conversations about this in the past, and we both agree that whatever you're seeing outside yourself, there's always, it's a reflection of what's going on inside. So what do you see really has to change internally for your clients to overcome nice girl syndrome? Well, I think the main thing, and I think this came from Wayne Dyer originally, We treat people, we teach people, I can never get that right. We teach people how to treat us. So if we're like, I don't want to upset anybody. Okay, I'll take care of you. They're just going to expect it without giving it a second thought. But when you stand up and go, nope, nope, that doesn't work for me anymore. And this is always done with love. This is done with love and compassion. This is not done in an F you kind of angry uh, energy. This is like, I'm loving myself and I'm loving you because I know it's going to take you a minute to get used to the new me and the new dynamic between us. And sometimes you have to step away from people completely. Sometimes you're dealing with manipulators or narcissists who are never going to get it and they're always going to play the victim. They're either the victim or the hero, hero in all of their stories. So if they're the victim in yours, you need to step away. And what I like to tell my clients to tell people like that is, I wish you well and I wish you away. You don't say it directly to them. Usually you just say it to yourself and send that energy to them. I wish you well. And I wish you away, but that, that self-love and that conviction to go, no, I am going to take care of me. That is where it starts. 
And, you know, you've heard me talk about my self-love practice that I did a long time ago where I used Louise Hay's affirmation, I love and approve of myself. I just did it by rote over and over and over and over. And I started attracting all these miracles in every area of my life, at home, at work, romantically, financially. So that self-love internally, I mean, we both know this all starts from within what we think, how we feel then that determines what we're projecting out into the world, which determines what we attract back to us. So it's that place of self-love. And sometimes you need those boundaries in order to focus and nurture that self-love. That is so true. That is so true. Well, Tana, you are pure magic, but I have yet to see your magic wand. And I know that for me anyway, probably nobody else in the world, but I would really love to have everything solved for me just like an in an instant. And sadly, it doesn't usually look like but there's a process involved. There are steps that we see real coming to realization in our lives that indicate we're making progress. So for when you're working with your clients, what do you get them to focus on? What does progress look like? Well, we start with what they want. First, they have to figure out what they want. Sometimes they've never had the time or space or opportunity or, or given themselves permission to think, what do I want? Because what they want, they might think, oh, it's selfish. Other people are going to be neglected. And usually that's not the case. If they've been taking care of people, people can take care of themselves. Unless they're dealing with a child, people can take care of themselves. So it always starts with, what do I want? And more importantly, how do I want to feel? Because sometimes they don't know what that looks like. And if we can get to the feeling place, like I, you know, I'll give you an example. When I was focusing on attracting a romantic relationship, I, I focused on, because I first consciously attracted my husband. We were friends. I was in love, blah, blah, blah. So we were together and then we were apart for a little while. And I started doing this because I didn't know what the ideal man for me looked like. So I focused on how I wanted to feel. And so I imagined hugging him so I didn't have to look at his face because I didn't know what he looked like. It's like, how do I want to feel? I want to feel loved and adored and taken care of and I want to have mutual interests and I want to be best friends and I want to enjoy each other's company and I want to have common interests and I want to be on the same page, page spiritually, all that kind of stuff. And just how that made me feel. And I embodied it. I walked around and embodied it. And then my husband came back because he was the right person. But the feeling is so important, whether it's a relationship, a career, a home, something you don't even know what you want. You don't know what form it's going to take. If you can embody the feeling of it, the universe will deliver it in the perfect way, in the perfect form for you. So the feeling is the most important thing and it's the best place to start. And you know, one thing that just came up that I wanted to share with you because this has been brought to light for me with some of my clients. We think we're being incredibly loving when we do everything for someone but in reality, we're putting them in slavery because they're so dependent upon us to do that for them. They don't realize they could do it for themselves. And it's almost like we don't believe in them. We see them as being so weak and so pathetic and so desperate that we have to step up to take over. And so that sends a really negative message to people here. We think we're being loving, but the receiver might not receive it as a loving gesture. And sometimes it's so much more loving when we go, we re I really believe in you. I know you can do this for yourself. And sure, I'm here as backup if you have any questions, but you got this, honey. I can't wait to see it come to fruition through you. I mean, yeah. I just think that's an important component of the nice girl syndrome. There's also a little bit of controlling going on here. And when you're trying to control everything in your life, you're stifling your connection to the divine and you're stifling a lot of the blessings that can come through your relationship. So yeah. I just love your perspective on that. Thank you. And thank you for pointing that out because there's a lot of enabling. We enable people and then that does feel like we have a sense of control because like, okay, I know what's happening and I know what to expect here. And I, it is a way of like, okay, you're going to stay here. This is your role. This is my role. Even though it's depleting me and it's killing me, I know what to expect. So, but, and, and that's the great thing because in the work that we both do, we need to hold that vision of our clients that they don't have for themselves yet. So we can do that for anybody in our lives. Like I know you can do, it. and this is the great thing that parents can do. I didn't end up having kids. I used to want four when I was younger and I wanted to be the cool mom. 
And I thought, all I'm going to do is say, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Because I had depression era parents who were like, oh my God, get a safe job. Ah, be careful. You know, so, and they were the most amazing, loving, supportive parents in the whole world, but they had that fear behind them. They were always like, always like, be careful, be careful. Oh, be safe, be safe. And I thought, I just want to tell my kids, and I do this with my clients now, you can do anything. I believe in you. Because sometimes that's all you need to hear from somebody is, oh, they believe in me. And that lifts them right up. It's so simple, but it's so powerful. Yeah, it's amazing what a difference it makes. You know, I recently saw a movie called um, Climbing the, or the Dawn Wall, and it's about climbing the Dawn Wall, which is on El Capitan in Yosemite. And these two guys spent three weeks trying to do this Im- amazing, I would say impossible, and for me it would be impossible. They did it. They made it. And they were the first ones to ever do it. And it was so interesting because they got national coverage and all of these well-known national news people are going, why? Why would you do this? What possible value can this have? And yet they are challenging themselves physically and emotionally and mentally to completely integrate and commit to something that's really important to them. And I think so often we disperse ourselves, right? We think, okay, my my mental focus is over here. Here's my emotional focus. My spiritual stuff's over here. My body, yeah, I'll get to that when I have some time. Mm -mm. It's all one. It's all integrated. And I love the way you bring everything together through your program. Mm, Thank you. And you brought up a really good point with that. Everybody's level of commitment and their goals are different. And we have so much comparanoia because I'm sure there's something. <laughs> I love that. that. I'm stealing that paranoia. I love that. <laughs> but it's from social media. Like you look at somebody like, oh, I haven't done anything like that. I haven't accomplished anything. But we have to acknowledge our own accomplishments. It's like, I, I would never want to do that. And neither would you, I don't think. So yay for them that they accomplished it. But take it as, okay, they did that. That means I can accomplish whatever I want, what is my big wall that I want to scale and conquer in my life? And it can be anything. It can be minor. It can be, you know, I, I want to create this career. I want to take this trip over here, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a big monumental thing that gets news coverage, whatever it is that's important to you and meaningful to you. That's enough. So true. So true. And circling back to the point that you made earlier Part of this um, show, they one of the guys had a baby, and the baby was like a year and a half, two years. I mean, could, he was walking, but not much. And he was trying to climb up on this little rock, and he couldn't quite do it. And his mom's video, videoing him trying to climb the rock, she's like, come on, honey, you can do it. Just push yourself, pull yourself up. And she keeps saying that, and the kid finally does it. And he stands up, and he's like... I mean, it, it happens from an early age when we get encouragement, we, when we get support, when we get that commitment to us that we can achieve what we want, our dreams, what we set out to do. And that's so important to be in a community of people that support you like that, because that emotional support is just invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. And you provide that. I mean, you provide that in your program. And you provide that in, you know, the groups that we are in on a regular basis. And I really appreciate it. Everybody there feels the support and has grown and accomplished great things because of that support. So I have to thank you for that. And also for the work you're doing in the abundance journey, that's helping people accomplish what they want as well. Thank you. I was referring to your program too, but... <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, my mind does that too, yeah. But I, just, I wanted to acknowledge you, yeah. So, Tana, you were talking about this really cool quiz that you have for us. Could you tell us a little bit about the self-care boundary quiz? Yes, the self-care boundary quiz. This helps women determine where they are in their self-care. Depending on their responses to the questions, they will get a tapping recording to support whether they need some more, whether they need to set some boundaries, they need to support in doing that. There's a tapping session for that. If they're kind of in the middle, it's like, okay, let's support you with that and encourage you to go further. If they've totally got it down, it's like, yay, let's reinforce what you're already doing. But it it definitely is a first step to help them see where they are 
on that scale, am I taking care of myself? Am I completely neglecting myself? And then they get a whole slew of resources after that too, to empower them, encourage them, help them and support them on that journey to self-care. That is so beautiful. And it's really important what you were saying to affirm yourself, to take a step back and look at what you're doing and go, you know what? Good on me. You know, I'm going in the right direction. I'm making some good choices and I'm clearly going in the direction that I want to be going. I'm not all the way there yet. That's okay. But I'm making progress where I want to be. And yeah, this kind of a quiz is so important. It really helps you get clarity about where you are, where you could improve. And I love the EFT tapping. That is such an effective methodology for shifting your state mentally, emotionally, and physically. That whole interconnection that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, EFT does it all. It's brilliant. Yeah, I've been doing it for, gosh, almost 20 years now. And I love it. I incorporate it into everything that I do. And when you were talking about patting yourself on the back, I love that. You know, we've said this in in our groups and you've heard me say this when I've been going through different situations where I affirm to myself, and again, I'm not going to swear, but I'm effing awesome. And I want everybody to say that to themselves. Look at yourself in the mirror and go, you're effing awesome. I almost said it. You're effing awesome. And just say that. I am effing awesome. Because there's something about that that makes it a little more powerful. It does. And especially if you can be a little playful with it. You know, I think that's so important because humor and feeling happy is a really great way to anchor something in and anchor the happiness in at the same time. So when you can be a little over the top and a little silly with it and affirm yourself, you got this, honey, you're doing great. I am so proud of you. You are awesome. That's great. It really lifts your energy. So Tana, here at The Abundance Journey, we always turn the table on our guests because we know when we give is when we really, truly receive. So what can we do to support you? Well, I am wanting to help serve support encourage uplift empower as many women as possible so if there's anybody that this strikes a chord like hmm am i not taking care of myself am i a doormat right now am i too much of a nice girl am i living according to that nice girl programming take the quiz see where you are and a lot of women are ready for that program you know there's the 12 week overcoming nice girl syndrome program. They're like, yeah, please help me. <laughs> and, and there's all kinds of support in that. And then I have my infinite woman community as well. And we have a private uh, Facebook community and I do month, uh, twice a month trainings in there. I call them nice girl trainings because I help them with these issues that we're talking about right now to empower them and help them move forward. So just, they can find everything on my website. Links to everything are on my website, tannamarshall.com. So I just want to help women. If they feel called, if they need support, if they need help, if this resonates with them, come over and visit me. I'm here for you. Yeah, and share that free quiz because that will give them immediate insight into where they are and whether they really need to look at what they can do to nourish themselves more and set those boundaries and Get over that nice girl syndrome a little bit, you know, put it in its place, give it the right perspective so that you've got the nice girl power, because that's the part that's really missing. You can be a nice girl and give away all your power. And what I love about the work you do, Tana, is you get people to own their power and maintain their niceness, right? Yes. But but have the boundaries to really be their true selves. Yeah. And I, and I always say, transform your kindness into confidence and power. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're not nice anymore, but you're transforming that kindness into confidence. You know, they always think of the superhero pose into the confidence and power. Yeah. Oh, man. Tana, brilliant. As always, I always love chatting with you. I always get new insights. I always get new ideas and perspectives. Thank you so much for joining us. I am going to have a tough time picking just one thing to activate abundance around, but you're awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Elaine. I love what you are doing and I appreciate your support. I'm so glad that we can support each other on this journey. And I just, I think you're amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right, everybody stick around because we're going to activate abundance in just a second.
So are you ready to activate abundance in every single area of your life? You can get in flow with your business and your clients. It's as easy as you can imagine to create the kind of revenue you really want in your business. You can join me for the Abundance Journey six-week training and coaching program that help you turn your problems into prosperity. Just visit theabundancejourney.com to sign up for our next adventure. You can see why I love and adore Tana Marshall. She is amazing. She's brilliant. She's compelling. She's interesting. She's fun. She's, oh my God, gorgeous. So <laughs> I want to be Tana when I grow up. But I got so much out of our conversation today. I know you did too. And it's time to activate abundance. So step one is gratitude. And I want to express my gratitude to Tana for giving me a completely different perspective on self-care and self-nurturing and nice girl syndrome. I mean, it's, it's nice to be nice. Yeah, it's a good thing to be a nice person. And unfortunately, too often, we give away our power when we're a nice person. And we actually undermine other people's power when we're too nice. We're taking away their opportunity to learn and grow. So I'm very grateful to Tana for giving me this new perspective on what nice girl really is all about and some of the pitfalls that we encounter when we get trapped in nice girl syndrome. The second step is to acknowledge something you heard that was an aha for you. And the thing that was a big aha for me is that nice girl is a power. Nice girl is one of your superpowers, but too often you don't apply your power effectively so that it ignites you, emboldens you, and allows you to shine your brightest and others around you to shine too. If you're not leveraging your nice girl power effectively, you're undermining yourself and you're undermining everybody around you. So that's that's a dangerous space to be in. And I really appreciate getting that perspective, that insight. I want to appreciate the difference it can make in my life, step three, because I need to be much more aware of the boundaries that I have. I tend to jump in and try to do things for people. And I realize that sometimes people have to face their tikkuns. Tikkun is T-I-K-K-U-N. And a tikkun is something that you're brought here in this lifetime to face and overcome. It's something you have a lot of resistance to. It's something that scares you and brings up all your limiting beliefs. And it's one of the biggest gifts you're ever given in your entire life is a tikkun. And you know what they are because you always try to run from them. So I appreciate that the whole nice girl syndrome is one of my tacoons that I get to face. And so by having this conversation with Tana, I discovered one of my biggest blessings, that this is where I can access a lot more of my personal power and where I can also help others more effectively by having clear boundaries and supporting their boundaries too. Very interesting concept, right? So that's appreciate. Step four is activate. Now you either put it on your calendar or you create an anchor. And I realize there's a third way to activate abundance. That is to make a commitment to what you're going to do to implement what you just learned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to acknowledge my power when I'm in conversation with someone. This is mine to do and this is yours to do. And we'll collaborate on that. It's not like a dictation, but it's like, you know what? I feel comfortable with this part of it. Are you comfortable taking on that part of it? And then how do we get anything in the middle that neither one of us really can handle? Can we bring in somebody else to support us with that? I think that's an important step for me in setting and honoring my boundaries. And I want to commit to you right now that that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to activate abundance around maintaining my boundaries and leveraging my nice girl power. All right, step five is celebrate your progress. Awareness is the first step in your progress. Just knowing that this is a power you can tap into, knowing that this is a tacoon that you need to pay attention to and step through every time it shows up, every time I do that knee jerk, oh, let me just do that for you. I need to step back and go, wait a minute, Am I empowering this person or disempowering them by doing it for them? Even if it's fast and easy for me to do, I might want to step back and give them the space 
to discover just how powerful they are and show them that I believe in them and I know they can do it. That's really powerful too. And that's another version of nice girl power. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was an awesome day and I can't wait to see you for the next Abundance Journey. You've been listening to the Abundance Journey show with Elaine Starling. Visit theabundancejourney.com slash podcast gifts to access today's gift as well as gifts from our other guests. Tune in every week to activate abundance in your life and business. If something resonated with you, please share it with your friends so they can benefit too. Keep activating abundance and we'll see you in the next episode.